And that's a memo. Now for the top story tonight, new developments, as I said, in the Soto case. This afternoon, she appeared again before Judge Jorge Rodriguez Shomat. Ms. Soto apologized to him, her attorney saying she was under the influence of drugs and her remarks were inappropriate. Here's how the judge replied today. I should not even hold you as totally responsible. We live in a society where if you listen to music, every other word is a profanity. We live in a society where young people like you feel that it's perfectly okay to call all kinds of names to their teachers and their professors and their friends, and they feel that's okay. I think the judge watched my talking points memo earlier this week because we're thinking around the same thing here. The judge then vacated the jail sentence, and if Ms. Soto can post $5,000 bond, she can get out. Joining us up in Los Angeles, Anahita Sudagatfar, trial attorney. And from Kansas City, Dr. Brian Russell, a lawyer and psychologist. Dr. Russell, we'll begin with you. What do you think about this case in general? I liked it the way the judge had it, Bill. I think that. Consequences are key. We've got way too many young people being spared way too many consequences and way too many actions, and it's really rare in life that we actually help people long term by sparing them the consequences of their actions. In fact, Bill, that is much more the cause of our violence problem in our society than guns or lack of mental health care or any of this other stuff we've been talking about. All right, but surely I, I think the judge, I don't. I, 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 he was compassionate, and I think that was the correct thing. He made his point. She served four uh, days in jail. I would have done the same thing. You're saying, uh, Dr. Russell, that you would not have done the same thing? You would have let her stay in there for 30? Absolutely. Are, are you gonna, you're not really going to bet me at dinner that this woman is going to clean up her act I, and I not be back that. on but drugs and back in as, trouble as inside of a year. As an officer of the court, though, I think she has to show, he has to show some compassion. Um, I would have done that because the woman had no prior. If the woman had a prior, I would have kept her in. Anahita, how do you see it? Bill, you know, I say kudos to the judge. I certainly do not condone this girl's behavior. Clearly, she disrespected the court. Clearly, there's no excuse for what she did. And I agree with you, and I agree with the, with the judge here that we do have an epidemic of lack of respect. But you didn't respect. agree with the judge the when he hit her with the 30 in the first time around, did you? He, no, and he went way too far, and I appreciate the fact that he took a step back and realized that he was not doing the right, right. thing. What would you have and given this woman had you been the judge in that courtroom and she said F you to you? Look, I've, no, I've no, been no, in hundreds Anahita. of courtrooms. Anahita, you're in the courtroom, you're the judge, Bill. she says F you, you would have done what? That's criminal contempt, and I would have given her an admonition, and I would have warned her an that admonition. she is not to engage in that. Absolutely. And if she broke would that you admonition, have yelled she's at her going to jail. Or, would you have scolded her? Or an admonition? I mean, I that's pretty frightening, Anahita. I mean, you know, come on. Look, look, I would have certainly given her an admonition and admonition. let her know, you know, that you cannot. No, but look, but you have to give her a warning. Why? If she then I violates her that I admonition. Her, I would have given her two weeks in community service. All right, let's get to the bigger picture here. Um, <laughs> The judge, his statement to her, and again, I, I, you know, I just have the feeling he saw my talking points memo on uh, Tuesday, because that's exactly what I'm saying here, that the culture now, particularly for those Americans under the age of 30, is just rife with disrespect on every level, and it's like, hey, blank you, I'm going to do what I want, Dr. Russell, as a psychologist, I'm sure you're seeing that. Absolutely. We have way too many young people, Bill being taught, uh, not being taught to go through life thinking of themselves as part of something larger than themselves. And so what they're doing is going through life thinking of it like it's their own personal biopic in which they're the star and everybody else is just an extra. And the social media doesn't help. I always say if Narcissus no, they lived today, it. social media would be his... They encourage it, it because would be it's his a one-on-one -on -one thing. There's no community in the social media. It's just that. Yeah, I got one more Narcissus question for you, were, Anahita. I got to ask you this. Yeah. New York City sure. public school system now says you can say F you to that, your teacher in a classroom in front of all those kids. They're not getting suspended. You're going to stay in that classroom. And you might get an admonition. Oh, you think that's a good well, policy? Don't. That's, that's a little bit different. Look, I'm all for giving teachers in public schools more power to discipline kids. I think that we need to get to these kids before they end up before a judge like we see in Would this case with this Would you suspend kids if girl. you were the head of the school district here in New York City? The kid curses out a teacher. You suspend a kid? 
I would suspend the kid. Cursing at a teacher is not acceptable, but uh, it's not like throwing them into jail, so Bill. So happy, Anna Heaty. Made me so happy. <laughs> All right, Councilor. I'm glad to hear that, Bill. Very interesting discussion next on the rundown, President Obama.